So far, we have been able to respond to user events, but one interesting thing happening behind the scenes when event takes place, and that is an event received by an element doesn't stop at that one element. That event moves to other elements, the parent and the other ancestors of the element. This is called event bubbling. Now I know this sounds funny as if they percolate like coffee, but in a sense, that's exactly what's happening. So let's take a look at the drawing of the DOM again. Look at this LI element at the bottom. Let's say your user clicks on the list item. The list item receives the click event, but immediately after, its parent, the UL element, receives the same event. This means that if you added a click event handler to the UL, that event handler function would run as well. In other words, clicking on the LI is also clicking on the UL, and it doesn't stop there. Next, the UL's parent element, the body, receives the same event, and the event keeps traveling until it gets to the topmost element on the tree. Likewise, if the H1 element receives an event, that event travels to the body element and finally to the root as well. So in simple words, events rise up like bubbles through the DOM tree, which is where that term bubble comes from. What bubbling allows us to do is listen for events on ancestor elements. For example, if we set a click handler on the body, our callback will trigger whenever any of its children are clicked. So if any of the list items, the paragraph or headline elements are clicked, the callback will trigger in this example. Event bubbling might not seem immediately useful, but in fact, it will allow us to write much more powerful handlers. For example, we can use this to replace all the handlers we are attaching to each list item with just one pair of handlers on a parent element. I'll show you how. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript DOM. And then open the index.html file in the browser. In the index.html file, remember to link app.js file. In the previous lecture, we wrote code to look through all the list items and attached individual handlers to each item. Well, with bubbling, we could just do this once on an ancestor of these list items and all events would still be caught and handled as they bubble up. This would make our code much simpler to implement, as well as using less of the browser's memory for all those individual listeners. And there's one more benefit. Since the handlers are not bound to individual list items, any item can be added after the listener has run, and no additional setup is required for that item events to be handled. So let's switch back to index.html and find out where we can attach our event handler. So when you are trying to decide which element to use, remember, it has to be an ancestor of the target elements. In other words, an element that wraps around the element you are interested in. For example, setting the event listener on the headline is not good, because it's a sibling of an ancestor, not in the direct line. Also think about what element will ever be removed from the DOM. For example, the body element will almost never be removed, but it's usually best to get as close to the target as possible. So let's attach it to this div of the class list, which contains the whole list. Now in the app.js file, as you can see, we already have a reference to the list div element, so let's reuse it. So first, I'll remove the for loop. And this list item selection. Then I'll place each event listener on list div, not on list items. But looking at the inside of these callback functions, there's a problem. When event fires on list div, how do we know which list item is triggering the event? The only thing we have is a reference to the entire div. So in the next lecture, I'll show you how to solve that problem using what's called the event object.